Hey guys, it's Anna here with another adaptive PE video. This is lesson plan number five. And whoa, where has the time gone? It feels like just like yesterday when I started lesson plan number one. This has been a crazy experience, but also pretty fun that I get to create these videos for you guys. And I hope that this is a really cool, helpful tool for you guys at home. And again, I don't think that we ever have time to kind of just sit and reflect on this whole experience. Well, I thought in the beginning, this felt like as a Corona vacation, but usually vacations end. And I feel like this is a never ending vacation, but then you just have to kind of say to yourself, wow, I am strong, I am smart, and health is wealth. And that, you know, we are smart with what we're supposed to be doing and social distancing and washing our hands and protecting our loved ones. And that we're strong because we can get through this and the health is wealth and that hopefully we can still stay active at home during this time because it's super important so i hope that you guys are doing well and you know always try to reach out to your teachers to your family to your best friend to anyone and just talk talk about you know this crazy time see if somebody else can relate journal go for a walk listen to music or just sometimes dance it out and so I definitely been more into dancing and then I'm not a really good dancer, but sometimes when you gather up your siblings and you play a song that all of you guys enjoy really loud, that's just a good mental break, okay? So if you guys have any questions on mental break strategies or even just more active tips, go ahead and email us and yeah. So before we get started, of course, we're gonna start with our breathing and our warm ups, and of course some yoga poses and we're gonna do another version of boat link today. So this time I'm actually gonna start with breathing first before we get into our warm up. So I know that in my previous videos, I kind of did the reverse, but this time let's just kind of start with breathing. So this is a breathing technique that I have learned through my personal yoga experience. And I've also, actually, excuse me, I can't even speak today. Um, learned through occupational therapists that I have worked with. So all you have to do is just spell your name. So when we inhale, we're gonna inhale and we're gonna spell out our name. So mine is very short, so I always have to add my last name into it. So for example, for E-N-A, just Anna. So you inhale, E, exhale, N, inhale, a. So every time that you inhale, spell out the letter, exhale, another letter, and you're gonna keep doing that um, until you get your name. So again, if you have a short name, then do your last name. If you have a um, good, if you have a good, long name, that's perfect, okay? So just spending, whoa, not the camera. So just spending a few minutes just breathing and I'll do it with you guys. So again, inhaling, E, Exhaling N, inhaling A, exhaling L, and so on. So go ahead and just take the time to just spell it. And if you have to do it for a few more rounds, that is perfectly fine. If you wanna do someone else's name, go ahead. So set your intention, something good and something positive. Okay, so now we're gonna do some yoga poses and we're gonna do them from the chair. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna have one ankle up right above your knee so perks of being a one-man team i wish i had a cameraman but hopefully you guys can see that my ankle is above my knee so all you guys are going to do is just hold this position keep your posture up so you can grab your hands around your foot and your knee to force your shoulders to go back and just hold here for a few seconds so let's do 10. Mm -hmm. and good and let's switch and when you're doing stretches, always be mindful that one leg is gonna be flexible the other and that is perfectly okay. So my left leg, not flexible whatsoever. So ankle, left knee above my right knee and then just kind of have it, have gravity take over and just let that knee go down and just hold. Um, then we're gonna go into a wide stance here, having our toes face into an angle. So all we're gonna do here, you can grab onto your chair with your left hand 
and bring your right arm over and hold. Come back to neutral, let's do the same thing to the other side. Holding it for 10. And then what you can do, so again, being away from the backrest of the chair, so just going here and then letting gravity take over and just kind of And in previous videos, I showed that you guys can go to one side and hold there and then go into the other. So again, think of all those muscles you are activating right now in your back, in your core, your shoulders, your neck. So this is just super good. So what you guys can do, and I'm looking at my notes to make sure that I do not miss a yoga pose. So again, what you can do is here, kind of like, so as if you're crossing your legs, but let's bring that knee up and then look to one side. So again, holding it here. Good, same thing to the other side. So again, holding here, we get one side, more flexible than the other. And holding it. So if somebody needs assistance with this, so again, just gently raise their leg as high as they can and just have them hold it here for a few seconds. And again, really make sure that you guys have a good communication of where you know, their where their um, pain tolerance can go and where is a good stretch for them. So again, just holding it here or even just doing marches in place and stretching out the other leg. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our chair to the side, move our legs back, have them straight, and then all you're gonna do is relax your head down between your shoulders. Good. Then we're gonna use the back of the chair and you guys can't see my face, but you guys are gonna be straight up and we're gonna hold for 10. And switch, 10. So for one of my friends that um, just need just that safe support, so hold them behind their back just to make sure that they're standing in a safe position and just have them move around or even just kind of challenge their balance by holding on to one leg so they can activate those hip flexors in their leg muscles. Next one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a deep lunge. So having a stretch out, bringing your right leg back and then holding it here, our back is straight and holding it for 10. Coming up and again, switching. So again, sliding my left leg all the way back, making sure that my back leg is straight. My knee is over my toes, back is straight and holding 10. Next one. So now my left leg is gonna be back. Both legs are gonna be straight. And now we're kind of hinging at the hips, going here, still looking straight. And you should feel the stretch right here behind your hamstring and holding it for 10. And switching, that feels so good. Holding it for 10. Good job guys. Yeah, so that's it for yoga. And again, with this document, you guys can follow the link and there's more yoga videos. If you guys want to add more or pause the video, rewind and do it one more round. Okay, so for the next activity, it's called head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Okay, so this might be familiar to some. And yeah, I'm gonna show one standing and then one is sitting. So all you guys have to do is make sure where you know your head is, shoulders, knees, and going all the way to your toes. Bring it back to your head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Sometimes it's gonna repeat and then say knees and toes again. So head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Back up to your knees, back down to your toes. And again, a few more times. So you can do it super slow. So head, and again, not just doing this head, but really going head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Or you can do it super fast. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. 
head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. So again, you guys decide which tempo you wanna go. Do you wanna go super fast or slow? So from sitting, same thing. Point to my head, really making sure that I exaggerate my moves, movements. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Slower, head, shoulders, knees and toes. So again, put some music to it and then just do this a few more rounds. So if we are not the ones doing the workout, but we are helping our friend do the workout, so this would be kind of how it looks during head, shoulders, knees and toes or any kind of warm up, and how you can help them to successfully warm up. So if Mr. Bear is sitting and we're doing head, shoulders, you can focus on one arm at a time or both and just really help bring that range of motion head shoulders, knees, and toes. And you can just, again, warm up just the arm. So again, just doing some arm raises here or side raises or even going back. So as we did before, so if Mr. Bear was saying, just kind of bringing it back. So again, any kind of arm movement is good for that range of motion. So really get that blood flow going. You can go forward or you can go back. So again, you can do both hands or you can just focus on one arm at the time. Same thing with the legs. You can either, let's bring Mr. Bear all the way back. So again, you can just focus the leg and just gently raise their leg up and down or just their thigh or even just help assist bringing that leg out and in. Again, any movement is really good as long as it's you're going and you're kind of just slowly testing it and see how far they can go so you can see if there's progress each week. So we are doing another bowling activity. So the purpose of bowling, why are we doing it, is to work on that hand-eye coordination. Again, for the social skills, working on sequencing, taking turns, and again, balance, um, body awareness. So again, using this activity to kind of hit those like check mark each of those categories. And we really wanna make sure that our friend is learning how to hold on to the ball, learning how to aim and then releasing at the pin. Okay, so really making sure that their attention is there, that they're focusing and that they're aware of the rules of the game. So for the pins, like I used for the last video, I use plastic cups. Again, I barely use this, but you guys can use paper towel rolls, um, paper towels, you can use plastic bottles, you can use Pringle chip cans, soda cans, whatever you, ca whatever you can to use for bowling pins. And then for the bowling, for the bowling ball, you could just grab two socks, two tube socks, roll them together and you can use that or grocery bags, get them all together. Or you can even use that bean bag from the bean bag activity that we did two weeks ago. So yeah, so gather up all your stuff right now, gather your sibling, your cousin, or whoever's in the house with you, and let's get to it. Okay, so for this one, it's gonna be a little different than your average how you set up a your bowling pins. This one's gonna be shaped as a clock. So again, you can label these with just like a marker of where one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock is, or you can challenge yourself and kind of guess. And again, you can modify this by having it close or you guys can spread out as much as you can. If you are a friend that's in a wheelchair, you can also utilize a broom to again reach and hit the ball with the broom and have it hit the target. Okay, so again, I'm going to do a first close up and you're going to have a partner for this. So the partner is going to retrieve wherever the ball goes and they're going to bring it back to you while they get to dictate where you're gonna hit. So we're gonna pretend that I have a friend, I'm friendless for this video, and they're gonna tell me, so three o'clock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go three o'clock. So then after you get the ball back, so then now I'm gonna do 12 o'clock. So again, and you can practice on your movements, on your bowling here, and then get it. I'll do the same thing for six o'clock. Let's do the same thing for 
nine o'clock. Okay, so, and again, try to get as much as you can. So you can also modify, as I scoot up, modify by having a string onto the ball. So you guys can kind of, you know, go here and you can be control where the ball goes. So that could be it. Or again, you can use a broom and hit it as you go. So again, and you guys are in control of how far apart you want your bowling pins to be. Rather it's close or rather it's far away. Okay. So I hope you guys have fun and enjoyed the video. And let me know how the activity goes. If you guys have any of their ideas, questions, please email us. It's what we're here for. So again, hope you guys are all well. Good luck. Stay positive. Again, wash your hands. Be careful going out there. Wear a mask. And yeah, miss you guys.